Welcome to the fourth video in the Intro to Tyke API Management series. In this video, we'll be going over the plugins provided out of the box, as well as talking about some of the more advanced API features. Let's get started. We'll begin today by talking about authentication. Let's go into the API that we previously configured and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Here you'll notice that we're set on open or keyless authentication mode, but in practice this isn't very useful because ideally you'd like to add security to your APIs. Clicking on the drop-down menu, we can see that Tyke supports multiple different types of authentication out of the box. Things such as authentication token, basic authentication, authentication using JOTS, mutual TLS, OAuth 2.0, and you can even write your own custom authentication plugins should you choose. Today we're going to go with authentication token. Selecting this option, you can see that Tyke now expects an authorization header to be set. Let's go up and hit save. Update API. Now when I tab back to Postman and I make the same GET request, you can see that the authorization field is missing. So how can I get a key to access my API? That's pretty easy. On the left hand side underneath System Management, you want to click into the Keys tab. Now at the top right, we want to hit Add a Key. And when we create a key, we can either create it from a policy or we can just specify the API this key has access to. Let's click over into Choose API and select our HTTP bin demo. You'll see that in the key level, we can also specify rate limiting, throttling, and usage quotas. In the configuration section, we can give it alias for our key, and we can also specify when the key should be expired. I'm gonna set mine to do not expire. We can give tags for our keys so that we can group them together, and we can also specify some metadata that can be associated with the key. For example, we can place information here that can be injected to the headers of our request for processing by downstream. I'm going to go ahead and hit create key. Make sure to copy the key ID. And in Postman, what I want to do is set an authorization header with the value of the key that I just copied. Now you can see that I have access to HTTP bin again. But what happens if I have multiple keys that I want to manage? Do I have to individually update the settings for each key? No, this is where policies come into play. A policy can be thought of as an access template. So if I come into the policies tab on the left hand side underneath system management and I go to add a policy, I can specify that keys provisioned from this policy have access to specific APIs such as HTTP bin. And you'll notice that on the policy level, I can also specify rate limiting, throttling and usage quotas. Let's see what this might look like in person. So I'm going to give my API an, a rate of five requests every 60 seconds. And again, in the configurations, I need to give my policy a name. For example, I can call this one the low rate access policy. And I can set, specify that keys provision from this policy will never expire. Let's go ahead and create this policy. Now that our policy is created, let's make a key from it. So again, on the left hand side, we want to click into the keys. We want to add a new key, but instead of choosing an API this time, we want to specify the policy that this key should be created from. And you can see that the rate limiting, throttling, and the quotas are being set by the policy itself. Make sure to give this a copy as well. We're going to copy the key ID and come back into Postman. Updating the value here, this key is now governed by the policy, which only gives me an access rate of five requests every 60 seconds. Let's see what that looks like if we make six different requests. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on the sixth request, you can see that my rate limit has been exceeded. So we've gone over a couple new things today. How we add authentication to our APIs, how we provision keys to access authenticated APIs, and how we manage these keys by using policies. For the next part, let's go into our APIs and make this an open slash keyless API. We're going to scroll back to the top and hit update. Now we can explore the different plugins that Tyke provides you out of the box. In order to see this, let's go into the endpoint designer. The first thing that we want to do is go ahead and click add an endpoint. There's three fields here. The first one is that we can specify the method of our request. We can specify the relative path. And then this drop down menu is a list of all of the plugins that will provide you out of the box. 
let's take a look at the body transform plugin. For example, you'll see a template section down here. In here, we'll support things such as Golang templating functions, as well as iteration and conditionals. Let's see how this might look. If you'll recall, the slash XML endpoint returns XML data from HTTP bin. Now supposing we want to take this XML data and then transform it into JSON data, what might that look like? Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking all of the data and I'm piping it into the built-in JSON Marshall function. Now when I update my API, flipping over to Postman, you'll notice that if I hit the XML endpoint, I'm going to get JSON data back. But this isn't formatted properly because there's no header being sent along with it. So let's go ahead and add a modify header. And we're going to just inject this header into the response. So what we've done is we've taken this XML endpoint and we've transformed the data into JSON data as well as injected a header instructing that the content type is application JSON. Let's take a look at how we can version our APIs. I'm going to come into the versions tab at the top and unclick this checkbox. Now you'll notice that Tyke is expecting a header X API version. We can specify a default version for our API and let's say we have a V2 version with no expiry date specified below. I'm going to go ahead and update my API. And in the endpoint designer, you can see that in the default version, there's still the plugins that we defined earlier. However, for V2, we don't have any plugins specified. What this means is that if I go back into Postman and update my headers with the key with the value of V2, you'll see that the original XML data is being returned by HTTP bin. Removing the header, you can see that we can get our transformed response back from HTTP bin. So this is a super easy way for us to version our APIs and add different logic on the same endpoints. For example, suppose I wanted to add a mock response to my version v2. I can go into my plugins, I'm going to add a whitelist, and I'm going to go ahead and add a mock response. Now in this response, suppose I want to return some test JSON data back. And as before, I want to inject the headers of the content type of application JSON. Now, when I go back to Postman and enable my V2 of this API, you'll see that I'm getting mocked responses back. As you can see, the list of possibilities is endless. You can combine any types of plugins with any types of versioning. And if there's any functionality in here that doesn't exist, you can go ahead and write your own custom plugins in Python, JavaScript, Go, Lua, or any gRPC supported language. Check out the video description for a link to our GitHub, where you'll find a few examples of custom plugins that we've written. In the next video, we'll be going over how to configure our developer portal and how to publish our APIs to the developer portal. See you in the next one.